you. Thank you for your great grace and mercy that kept us up till this moment. That we can stand, we can worship, and we can lift our voices and cry, Abba, Father. Glory be to your name in the highs. Father, minister life to each and every one of us today. Take all the glory, take all adoration, edify the church. In Jesus' name, we have worship. Amen. Before you sit down, why don't you look to the right and to the left and say something beautiful to your neighbor. Amen. I see you at the top. Come on, say something beautiful to your neighbor. I see you at the top. It does not matter what you are going through right now. By the grace of God, it will end in praise. Hallelujah. Let's have our seat in the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, choir. That was a beautiful piece. God bless you immeasurably in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Today, by the grace of God, I'm going to be teaching on a message I titled Connecting the Kingdom Wealth. Connecting the Kingdom Wealth. It's essential, it's important that as believers, as sons and daughters of God, that we connect to the Kingdom Wealth. Because we are God's ambassadors here on earth. We are royal priesthood. We are peculiar here on earth. Yes, the Bible says we are in this world, but we are not of this world. So it is important, it is of great importance that you are blessed. And you must show it to the world that truly that God is your father. Like David said, Father, let no man ask me where is my God. So the wealth of God must be evident in our lives. It must be seen and through the wealth or the manifestation of the wealth of God in our lives, the world must come to our God. We must become attractive to the world. We must become the talk of the town to the world that God has indeed done something great and something marvelous in our lives. But it is rather unfortunate that as Christians, as believers who carry the Holy Ghost everywhere, we are yet not manifesting in the kingdom world. Please give me Deuteronomy 8.18. Give me Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18 said, and you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth. It is only God that gives power to get wealth. The Bible says in Zechariah 4 says that it is not by power, it is not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Without God, you can do nothing. Without God, you can do nothing. It is God that gives the power to get wealth. But why are we not connected? Why do we have to struggle? Why do we have to sleep late and wake up to eat the bread of sorrow on a daily basis? Why is it that it looks like the princes are walking barefooted and slaves are riding on horses? Today, I believe the Lord will give us the insight of his word and the word will illuminate each and every one of us and bring deliverance to us in the mighty name of Jesus. The first thing you need to take note about the kingdom wealth is that the kingdom wealth is here on earth, is not in heaven. So many believers believe that when they pray, the wealth will come down from heaven. God only gives the power, the ability, the strength for you to connect with his world on earth. Let's look at Psalm 24, verse 1. The Bible says, the earth is the Lord, the fullness thereof, and everything that dwells in it. The earth is the Lord, the fullness thereof, and everything in the world, the gold, the silver, the cattle on the thousand hills belongs to God, and therefore the 
kings and the queens of God. They are for the princes and the princesses of God. They are for the children of God to manifest in on earth. So that through us, the heathen, the world, they will see the glory of God over our lives. And I, I pray this morning that somebody here, before the end of this year, he will manifest the kingdom world. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let's look at the book of Psalm chapter 2 verse 8. Psalm chapter 2 verse 8. Just to confirm to us that everything we are asking God for is here with us already. He says, ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possessions. Ask of me. All you need to do is just ask your father. But before you ask, you should do certain things. You don't just ask God because God doesn't waste his resources. God will not give his wealth to unbelievers. God will not give his wealth to someone who is not identified by him in his kingdom. So first thing that you need to take into consideration is your uprightness and righteousness and dedication to the work of God. Before you can ask, you must ensure that you are in his kingdom. Before you can ask, you must ensure that you are saved. Because Jesus said, I know my sheep and my sheep knows me. They hear my voice. If you are not one of these, you can't benefit from the kingdom well. Oh, you can probably take the crowns. Just like that woman. She said, even dogs eat the crowns that falls from their master's tables. But you are not dogs. You are not dogs. You are operating here with the kingly anointing. You have been blessed. God possessed you for himself to manifest his glory here on earth. You have been brought out of darkness. You have been brought out of sin. So you must be righteous. Who shall ascend to the heel of God? A man with a clean heart, a pure heart. Your heart must be pure. Your hands must be clean. You must be dedicated to the work of God. I shared an example with someone. I said, how do you expect God to bless you when you are not walking in his kingdom? I said, can you go to MTN and say to the chairman or the board of directors of MTN that they should pay you salaries at, end, at every end of the month if you are not one of their staffs? She said, no. I said the same thing in the kingdom of God. If God does not identify you as one of his workers, as one of his staffs, it becomes difficult for God to bless you. Because we should know and understand that the devil is the accusers of brethren. God will not bless you and the devil will now go and be saying, why should you be blessing the one that is under my influence? So God is a keeper of covenant. And he will not violate his words. He will not violate his principles. Because my eyes, the eyes of God, cannot behold iniquities. So the only thing that can hinder you from connecting to the kingdom world is sin. And if you are not identified with God in his kingdom. Number two, to connect with the kingdom world, you must consciously work and develop your character. You must work on yourself. Some people believe that it is the uh, it is God who will come here and now to work on them. You are the one that will consciously work on yourself, develop yourself on a daily basis. The Bible says, "Let him that thinketh he stand and take heed, lest he fall." Paul said, I die daily. That simply means he is conscious of himself. He evaluates himself. He prays he's, uh, he's himself in the presence of God on a daily basis. And try to work it out. Working out your salvation with fear and with trembling. So you must consciously work on your character. 
What are those things? What are those terrible habits that you need to do away with that can hinder you from connecting to the kingdom world? You have to deliberately take them away. That's one of the things I practice on a daily basis. I don't want to be disconnected from the blessings and the, the kingdom world. So every day I walk out my salvation with fear and trembling. I learn certain things that I know can connect me to the kingdom world. And one of it is honor. The Bible says, honor your father and your mother. Honor your father and your mother. And your days, your days, long life is one of the kingdom world. Some of us don't know. Some of us have limited the kingdom world to money. No, 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 no. Money is the least of the blessings that God can give a man. What is the essence of being rich and you are sick? What is the essence of being rich and then you have cancer? And when the money comes, you are spending the money on the cancer or on the sickness. So long life is one of them. And to connect with long life, the Bible says, Oh no! Honor is an access key to the kingdom world. Honor your father and your mother. And it's not limited to your father and your mother alone. It may be to a child. It may be to those who are older than you. It may be to those neighbors. It may be to those friends that you need to honor in one way or the other so that you can connect with the kingdom world. So you have to consciously work on your character. Of course, the Bible says a fornicator cannot be blessed of God, cannot connect with the kingdom world because our body, in 1 Corinthians 3, 16, that your body is the temple of God. So how do you expect God to bless the temple that is corrupt? How do you expect God to bless the temple that is being messed up on a daily basis. So you have to carefully and consciously develop good character in the Lord. Number three, helping others to grow. Some of us don't know that help gives birth to help. What you sow is what you will reap. Helping others to go grow. Take interest in people. Help them to grow. You don't understand that we are all climbing ladders on a daily basis. Some have gone up and they are coming down. The investment they made whilst they are climbing is what will sustain them when they fall. Help others to grow. I have said this before that the greatest and the greatest of all investment is to invest to help man to grow. If you invest in properties, one day the property may collapse. If you invest in cars, robbers can come and steal the car. If you invest in shares, you've seen it before in Nigeria, everything crashed down and came to nothing. But the greatest investment that I believe God can look down from heaven to pay you back is when you help people to grow. As well, when Jesus Christ came here, his mission and mandate was to grow people. He saw Peter, who was a coward, who was fearful, and said, follow me. I will make you fisher of men. Jesus invested so much in Peter. He never looked at the excesses of Peter. He invested so much in Peter. Brethren, when it was time for Jesus to leave this world or to leave this planet, who took over the church? Peter. Who are you helping to grow? Who are you helping to grow? Who are you investing on? I think you need to take that into consideration. Because the one you are investing on today 
may be the richest man in the world tomorrow that will come back for you. Let me tell you a story of this wonderful and great footballer. When he was young, I think in his teenage age, he was homeless. There was no food for him to eat. So he was always sitting by a burger house. In the morning he will go there and sit there looking for whom to help him to give him food for that day. And this lady who works in the burger house, house take note of this little boy. And every time the lady will come out buy the burger with her money and give to that little boy. She never knew that she was actually investing in her future. She never knew that that little boy was the one that God wanted to use to turn her poverty around. It was just burger was given to that boy every day, every time. And it was not long. This little boy became a professional footballer that is known worldwide. And one day the boy said, it's time to pay back. And he put it on social media that he should start looking for this lady everywhere. Of course, they found her. Guess what? The boy, today is Christian Ronaldo. It's Christian Ronaldo. Just imagine what he will do to that woman. You don't know who is sitting next to you. You condemn people always. You castigate people always. You believe you are the best. Listen to me. You are just there today to help others. You don't know what will happen to you tomorrow. You don't know the dimension at which God is going to come through to bless you. I want you to know whatever you saw today is what you will read tomorrow. I understand it's painful to help. Some are in great. Some won't even appreciate it. Do it all the same. Keep on helping people. Solomon said in Ecclesiastes 11, he said, cast your bread upon the waters that after many days it will come back to you. Help people to grow. Number four, giving habits and hospitality. Giving habits and hospitality. Some of us don't know that to give is a gift. When you sow the Bible says, you will reap what you give. The same measure with which you give, the Bible says, it shall be returned back to you. I will give you an example in the Bible of, 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 uh, of a man who saw some strangers and decided to be of blessings to them. Abraham was sitting in his tent one day and he saw two men going. He never knew they were angels anyway. The Bible says, keep entertaining people but you don't, because you don't understand that one day you may be entertaining an angel. So Solomon, sorry, Abraham ran towards these people. Please, come and eat in my house. Please, let me wash your feet. And the men agreed. He never knew that those two men were the one that God will use to put an end to barrenness in his family. After blessing them, they said, we can't go without blessing you. Don't forget that children are equally kingdom's wealth. Children are the heritage of the Lord, the fruit of the womb, is reward. And the men said, by this time next year, come to think of it, if Abraham has seen those people and ignored them deliberately. What do you think? But he ran towards them and he blessed them and they made a pronouncement. By this time next year, you will be carrying your child. Even though the sailor did not believe, but you know what? Because of the seed that was sown, because of that hospitable nature, they bypassed the unbelief of Sarah. You never can tell 
whatever you are giving out, or whoever you are helping, may be an angel that will sustain you tomorrow. Or that will connect you back to the kingdom wealth. Or that will open the windows of heaven for God to answer all your prayers. There was a Shunammite woman who ran after this man of God who was always passing the front edge of her house. Sir, please come in. Eat with us. Please come in. Let's entertain you. And of course, Elisha agreed. And the woman quickly ran to her husband. Oh, let's build a bungalow for this one. Okay, let's make a whatever they, what, what is the name they call this? Is it uh, the rooftop house? Penthouse. Let's make a penthouse for this man. So that whenever he comes, he can rest there. Brethren, the Bible says wisdom is profitable to direct. You can imagine Elisha entering into that house and praying to God. The Bible says the anointing will flow down from Aaron's head. Then it goes down. Wisdom. That woman could discern. She understood. And the man of God said one day, Woman, what can we do for you? Shall we introduce you to the, to the governor? Shall we introduce you to the president of this nation? She said, no. We are okay. We are okay. My husband and I, we are okay here. We don't need such things anymore. And Gehazi observed that there was no child in that house. At that point in time, the wealth needed was that child. They had money. They had influence. They had mansions. They had cars. But there was no child. There was no child. And Elisha said, by this time next year, something beautiful will happen in this household. I decree into your lives, into your families, by, by the grace of God, that before December, you will sing a new song. Amen. I thought your amen would be the loudest. Yes. Number five. Faith and trust. Keep on faithing. Keep on trusting. Keep on believing. Jesus never said to us that it would be easy. Hebrew 11 says, Faith is the substance of that which you are hoping for the evidence. So please, don't allow your faith to be chattered. Don't allow the affairs of life. Don't allow the challenges of the environment. Don't allow the austerity, the increase in the prices of food to affect your faith. Don't. Don't allow betrayals to affect your faith. I want you to understand that the harm of flesh is designed to fail. Man will always betray man. It is normal. But A, guide your faith generously. Keep trusting in God. Keep believing. And I'm very sure, very soon, you will sing a new song. The Bible says, weeping can only endure for a night, joy comments in the morning. And I see somebody here. You will laugh again. Amen. I said, I see somebody here. You will dance again. Amen. The thought is over for you. But listen to me. It can never be over if God has not said to you it is over. Yes. I see you bouncing back. Amen. I said, I see you dancing say back. Amen. I see you dancing again. Amen. Number six, prayer and fasting. Don't stop praying. The Bible says men ought always to pray and not faint. Pray without season. You must not give up praying. Brethren, in Nigeria of today, I'm telling you the practical truth. It looks as if it's difficult to pray. But whatever it is that the devil is throwing at us is to take us back to God in prayers. Don't stop fasting. Keep on fasting. Keep on praying. 
at the end, you will laugh. Then number seven, listening to instructions. Listening to instructions. Let's look at Proverbs 19.20. Proverbs 19.20. Listening to instruction. The Bible says, listen to counsel and receive instruction that you may be wise in your later days. Listening to counsel, good words. He that walked with the wise, the Bible says, shall be wise. Let me round up with this scripture. Psalm 1. If you want to connect with the kingdom world, just take this into consideration. And I'm very sure the Lord will settle your cause this year. Blessed is the man who walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Verse 2. But his delight, his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in the law of the Lord, he meditates day and night. Verse 3. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruits in each season, whose, whose leaves also shall not wither, and whatsoever it wet, the Bible says, shall prosper. You want to connect with the kingdom world? Who are your associates? Who are your friends? Who are you sharing your problems with? I used to sit in with scoffers or walking in the paths of sinners. I used to conform to this world. Are you still using one leg to try what is happening in the world? Like some people will say, heaven help those who help themselves. This man wanted the kingdom world. He wanted to connect himself to the kingdom world. The Bible says he dissociated himself, he disconnected himself from anything that can infiltrate him wrongly. And his delight, the Bible says, is in the law of the Lord. And in the law he meditates day and night. And the Bible says it shall be like a tree that is planted by the riverside that will bring forth his fruits in due season. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Whatsoever he lays his hands upon shall prosper. Today, I want you to bow down your heads. Are you here today? You have been struggling using your own strength and energies and, and skills. Thinking it is by your strength that you will prevail. I want you to know that the Bible says by strength shall no man prevail. All you need is a divine connection back to your source. God is the one that gives the power. He is the one that gives the ability to get wealth. Proverbs 19.21 says, Many are the devices in a man's heart. Many are the plans in a man's heart. But it is only the purpose of God that shall be established. It is only the will of God that shall be established. Maybe you are here today you have been struggling. How can I connect with the kingdom world? Lord, help me. You have been praying. You have been fasting. And it looks as if nothing is happening. I want you to check your life today. I want you to take an account of your life. Because God will be justified any day, any time. The Bible says, let all men be liars. Only God be true. Today, if you are here today and you have not given your life to Christ, I told you that He must find you in His presence. You must be one of His. Jesus said to that woman, How do you expect me to give the bread of the sons to the dogs? But thank God for the humility nature of that woman. Thank God because that woman was humble. She said, oh, my Lord, even the dogs eat from the crumbs of their master's table. That means, Lord, 
I may not know better, but have mercy on me. And Jesus considered that woman. Are you here today? You want the Lord to renew your strength like that of the eagle. You want the Lord to identify you in his kingdom and bless you again. Maybe you need to re rededicate your life back to him. Maybe you were once born again and you took it back. Oh, maybe you are even confused. Today is the day of salvation. If only you can be bold, be strong, be courageous. And say, Lord, here am I, help me. Lord, I stand, I stand with you, help me. You are the help of the helpless. Those are the words I'm looking for in Master's house today. If you are there seated, you want to renew your strength with God. You want to come back to the Lord. You want to rededicate your life back to Him. Just place your hands on your chest, your right hand on your chest, and we'll pray together. Place your right hand on your chest and say, Lord, I want to come back to you. I know I have messed up. Lord, I don't want to struggle on my own anymore. Lord, I need your help. You are the only one who can help me. If you are placing your hands on your chest, and you are not going to be ashamed of your father in heaven, stand tall on your feet. If you are not going to be ashamed, stand tall. Stand tall. You are standing for Christ. Take a bold step and walk towards me. Take a bold step and walk towards me. Lord,
thank you because you will help this world. And you will take all the glory over their lives. Glory be to your name in the hands. In Jesus' name we are praised. Amen. Congratulations. We celebrate you. Please shall we celebrate you. For those who stepped out, we would love to continue to pray for you and with you. The Bible says, higher sharpens higher. Amen? We don't want you to go back into the world, or we don't want you to go back into your uh, whatever it is that you have left for the devil. We don't want you to go back there. So we want to continue to guide you, to assist you, so that you can continue to stand in faith and continue to put your trust in him. So after this service, just wait briefly. I would like to have a thought with you. And I know the Lord will take it from there in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.